What's up, America? Welcome back to another video of the Mod Juice. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how we built our chicken tractor. This chicken tractor design is based off just a few acres Eggmobile. Shout out to Pete, he has some amazing videos, very, very educational. I've learned so much from Pete, so I want to thank him. I'll have his channel link in the description for you guys to go check him out. So this chicken tractor is 16 by 8 feet. Um, it's about 6.5 feet tall, and there's room for 80 birds on top and 20 for the side so we can we think it can fit around 100 but before we get into today's video i want to thank you guys so so much we got 100,000 views on our top video 100,000 now it's at, it's at 120 it's almost at 130,000 now we hit 100,000 on the other day that's amazing i never thought this would happen so thank you guys so much if you guys are new to the channel and want to help support us then please consider subscribing it'll help our channel out a lot one last thing before we start we all have COVID right now, well, except my dad, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I sound a little weird. But all of us are feeling good, we're feeling healthy, so yeah, let's get into today's video. So the first step to building this chicken tractor is that we need a trailer. We need something that it can sit on so we can pull it around. But luckily when we bought the farm, it came with all the hanging equipment. So, we're expanding our herd and we do not need as many square bales anymore. We need a lot more rounds so we can lose a hay wagon. It's okay. So the next step was to take apart the hay wagon. That was pretty intense. We stripped it down to the 4x6s that sit on the frame, so we can put our 2x6x8s for the floor joists. And yeah, this is on February 21st, so I'm a little behind on making this video, I'm sorry about that. Over a month later, on March 26th, we started the floor. So laying the floor joists were pretty hard. We had to notch out each one. They were 2x6s, so we notched them out 2 inches, to only have 4 inches above the 4x6 so it wouldn't be too tall so basically we shrunk it 2 inches after the floor joists were down it was time for the decking the decking was pretty easy it was all reclaimed from the hay wagon so it was all 2x6x16s by by that were cut down to like 15, 15 feet 8 inches, something around there. And we spaced them 1 and a quarter inches apart. So by doing this, when the chickens are up here sleeping at night, all the manure is going to fall on the floor, hit the floor, either fall through the crack or probably just hit the floor. And then the good part is that with this many chickens, when they're on the floor, when they jump down, they're going to be scratching the floor and they'll kick the manure. So we decided to do the small walls first, and then we're going to do the big walls after. Um, the small walls are pretty easy. They're 8 by 6.5, I think. The height's just whatever you want, whatever you feel is right. Uh, we thought 6.7 six was, six, was enough. And the 2 by 6s for the rafters add some room for your head and for the chickens. Because um, the poles are going to run this way, so their heads will be able to go up there between the rafters, which then gives us more space to walk in here. It's a lot easier. All the lumber in this project is all rough cut, so it's all dimensional lumber. It's all exactly 2x4, 2x6, 1x4. It's heavier, but it's stronger. It's all hemlock, and it'll last a lot longer than your Home Depot would. After we finished the end walls, we started on the side walls. The first one we did was the one with the door. You guys might be wondering, why are there no windows in this? Well, there are. We're not going to cut out the studs to build the windows. We're just going to put plastic or hardware cloth over the studs and frame out the studs. So we're not, so we're not like ruining its structural integrity or anything. We're just, we're keeping the studs there so it can still hold the weight of the snow. After the wall with the door is all framed, we start on the other wall. This wall over here, we decided to put the windows as high as possible because the nesting boxes are going to go all along the wall, so you got to think about that. With 100 layers, you're going to be getting 90 to 100 eggs a day when they start laying. So after all the walls are framed, next step were the rafters. The rafters are pretty easy, they're 2x6 by, by 8 feet and 2 inches. 
if you really wanted, you could buy some 10 footers and have it actually overhang a little bit more, but it's just whatever you want, whatever is easier. This is lighter, easier, skinnier, so it can fit in a lot, like narrow areas through the gates. Um, that's a big thing on the farm, so yeah. So now it's starting to look like a chicken tractor. Everything's framed, we got everything blocked. Only thing left to do now is put the strapping on and put the tin on. So the tin was pretty easy to cut. If I needed to cut a bunch of three foot sections, then I would just pile a bunch of tin on top of each other, make sure the end was square, and measure three feet and cut with the grinder. Now the strapping's all done and the tin's all cut, it's time to put the tin on. The tin is really easy to put on. Just a bunch of screws went all around the building. We did the big wall with the door first. So the biggest thing we were trying to figure out was how to do the corners. Are we going to cap the corner with 1x6s or use some lumber to try to like cap it off? But someone had a great idea. It's probably me. I have the best ideas in the family. Maybe it's my dad and brother. I'm not sure. But someone had a good idea to actually fold the tin around the corner, which made it look amazing. It's very, very professional. So folding over is probably the best thing we could have done. Um, I don't think capping would have worked too well. Folding over left no gap, just a couple added screws, and yeah, everything fit better when it was folded over. Actually, we didn't have to cut the tin um, to width. We just we snugged it in between and we wrapped it around enough so it would fit. <laughs> See, it looks good from the thing. Yes, so if you look at it with the one eye open. So after all the siding was done, it was time for the roof. The roof was really, really easy to do. Um, I just spaced everything out. I measured where the screws needed to go to get two foot on center because everything in this chicken tractor is two foot on center. All of the studs two foot on center, the strappings two foot on center, a belt, and the floor joists are two foot on the center, except for one of the ends, or two of the ends. So after the roof was done, we add some more screws to the tin to close some gaps, make it a little more stable. Um, while we were doing that, my brother was adding screens to the top of the vents. So with 100 chickens in here, you're going to need a lot of ventilation. Because if you don't have a lot of ventilation, your chickens are going to get sick, and you're going to have disease and a lot of other stuff. So just put ventilation in your thing. It's really easy to do. You said you wanted to be in the video. This is all I got, seriously. <laughs> wow, that's sweet. Yeah, those are awesome. The vents have chicken wire on them right now, but the windows do not because we have chicks in here, so we plastic off the windows and the vents to keep a little bit of heat in and make sure there's no like breeze coming through. So now it's time to build the door. I just put a bunch of 1x4s together, made it the heaviest door in the world. So one of the last things we did for this were the side supports. This thing is a kite in the wind. It wants to fly. Kind of like our flying video in Almost Italian. It was like, I don't know, we wanted to fly. You know, it kind of worked. I mean, a couple of concussions, but we're all good. So if you guys live in a very windy area, you need to put side supports on here so it doesn't tip over from the wind. This is just a big box. The wind can catch it pretty easy and tip it over. It's tipped over a hay wagon in a snowstorm, and there's nothing. The hay wagon has like these one by sixes every foot or two. So there's nothing for the wind to grab onto, but it still managed to flip it over in a windstorm, which is crazy. I don't know how that happened. It was a snowstorm too, so maybe like the snow impact, I don't know. On Pete's chicken tractor, he put the side supports pretty low, which is good for him, but for us, it's really windy here. So I added them into like the sides, because if you add them low, then it's just a lot more like stress on the building, because when the wind blows, it's going to be pushing it so low, and it, like it's going to like 
twist. It's weird. So I put them higher, so like basically in the middle of the sides, and then so that'll allow it to be more stable in the wind. So that's it for like the building part of the video. Um, I just want to talk about what the benefits are. The reason we are doing this instead of just having chickens in a coop, which is probably a lot easier, and just a run, is because I've raised chickens for like a pretty long time now. Probably like, I don't know, seven years, eight years. So watching chickens in a run for so long, it's just like they have nothing to do. There's no like purpose in their life besides egg production, and it's just, it's not like, I don't know, it's kind of cruel. It's not right. So. If we're going to raise a hundred egg layers, we're going to put them on pasture, they're going to be in the most beautiful place they can possibly be, live the happiest life they can possibly live, add nitrogen to the soil for fertilizer, for the grass, and everything to grow in the pastures to the cows or the hay fields, works either way, and they're going to trample, which will produce litter, which adds more carbon to the soil, they're also going to help stir up the soil a little bit for new growth to come through, um, and eat different bugs, which their manure will be fertilizer, and so many benefits. There's just so much to pasture raised chickens, but the biggest part is that your price goes way up because you can advertise as pasture raised meat birds, pasture raised layers, but yeah. And this thing is pretty easy to move around. All you gotta do is hook a tractor onto it. And then we got this fencing from Premier One, which Pete has in his videos. I think it's probably the same one. It's just an electric poultry net. And then we got 100 or 200, I think we got like 300 feet of it. So we're gonna have a big area around here. So that's going to be it for this week's video, guys. Um, I'm so sorry I did not post last week. We all had COVID. is not fun, and I still have COVID. So, yeah, it's only Monday, I think. Yeah, Monday. So, um, sorry if I seem like I'm a little weird, but I don't feel good at all. If you guys are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. Um, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which we're at 470 right now, I think. So, pretty close. We're getting like 20 a day, which is awesome. Pretty cool. I never thought this YouTube thing would happen, but it's, uh, it's looking like it might. So, yeah, help us get to a thousand subscribers if you want. I'm not going to force you guys. Just if you find this content interesting, if you learn something, then like the video. Um, it helps with the YouTube algorithm and it puts our video out there so more people like you can find it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.